Okay, so today we're going to talk about function transformations. Um, so we learned about our parent functions already. So uh, this is a lesson that goes along with already knowing your parent functions. So we're going to focus on doing quadratics because most people are most comfortable with doing quadratic functions. So we're going to transform and learn all the different transformations with quadratic functions. And then we're going to apply that knowledge to cubic functions and square root functions and absolute value functions. So it's just easier if we keep everything in the quadratic bubble for now um, so that we get the hang of it. So our parent function for a quadratic is y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared. And the long version of the equation is y equals plus or minus a parentheses x minus h quantity squared plus k. And we call that the vertex form of a quadratic. Now the vertex form applies to all the other functions. So what the plus and minus does, it will do the same for a square root. It will do the same for a absolute value function. It'll do the same for a cubic function. The h value, same goes for that and the k value. So what we're going to do today is we're going to discover what those different values do to the equal to the to the graph of the function. All right, so let's get started. So let's say the first thing that you're going to do is input into your calculator. Um, into your TI Smart View, preferably, and you're gonna see what uh, the different functions uh, to the equation do. That didn't make any sense, but you get it. <laughs> so we're into Y1. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna put in the parent function, which is X squared, right? And in the Y2 box, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in negative X squared. So the only thing I'm changing from the parent to what I sometimes call the child <laughs> is a negative in front of the function. So we're gonna notice what that does when we put it into the TI Smart View. So let's do that together. So we'll notice that the parent function is a happy face. And when I put a negative in front of it, it comes into a frowny face. So I can safely assume that anytime I add a negative in front of a function, what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna make a reflection across the X axis, okay? So it's important that we say that. So just like when I look in the mirror, how I have a reflection, that's what is happening over the X axis to be specific, okay? So how do we graph a reflection? So let's talk about tables now. Now that we've talked about equations, we've talked about graphs, like what does it look like in the form of a table, okay? So number one, sketch the parent function. You should already know the parent function by heart, right? Number two is reflect the points across the x-axis. So the parent function of y equals x squared has these five points, negative two comma four, negative one comma one, zero, zero, one, one, and two, four. So that's my parent function, smiley face. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna reflect each point across the x-axis. So if it's four spaces above the x-axis, the reflection point is going to be four spaces below the x-axis. If it's one space above, it's gonna be one space below. If it's on the x-axis, it'll stay the same. One space above, one space below, four spaces above, four spaces below. So I'm going to create that reflection. And then I'm just going to take those new coordinates that I have, and I'm going to put them into the table. And what I notice is, is that all my x values are exactly the same. Still negative two comma, neg negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. But what I notice about my y values is that they actually changed from positive numbers to negative numbers, okay? So that can be our new rule. Our new rule would be that when I make a reflection across the x-axis, my x values stay the same, but my y values turn to the opposite. So if they were positive, they're not negative. If they're negative, they're not positive. Okay, and here I get just go labeling the new points for whatever reason. <laughs> okay. Action. Okay, so what does the h value do? So we're gonna go ahead and add an h value into our equation. So in putting into your TI Smart View, what you're gonna do is you're going to do y1 equals x squared. So that's your parent function. So in the y2 value, what you're going to go ahead and do is you are going to go ahead and put parentheses x minus 4 quantity squared. So that's adding an h value. So that pink 4 is what we call an h value. So when I put it into the TI Smart View, I want to take notice of what it does to my function. So we'll take note that when we put a 4 into the vertex form of the parabola. What's gonna happen is that it's gonna move four spaces to the right, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're going to do Y3. So now you're gonna have three functions on the screen at the same time in your TI Smart View. You're gonna put parentheses X plus six quantity squared. 
into the TI Smart view, and we're going to take notice of what that does to the function. We can notice that that's going to move six spaces to the left, okay? So what does the H value do? You should be figuring that out. It actually is in charge of our horizontal shift, okay? So that moves it left or right, but take note that in the equation, it has minus four and that moved right. And then the plus six moved to the left. So we're doing the opposite of that value. So how do you graph a horizontal shift? I'm so glad you asked, because we're about to do that. So again, always start with your parent function. So y equals x squared. We know that function by heart. Negative 2 comma 4, negative 1 comma 1, 0 comma 0, 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2. Boom, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that on the graph. Do, do, do. And then in y2, I'm going to do the x minus 4 quantity squared, right? So I'm going to shift each point from the parent function four spaces to the right. So now I have my new graph, shoop, just like that. And I'm going to mark those coordinates in my new table. And so what do we notice about the new coordinates? What I notice about the new coordinates is that all of my X values have shifted, right? They've shifted four spaces. So negative two plus four is positive two. Negative one plus four is three. Zero plus four is four. One plus four is five. Two plus four is six. So, but notice what happened to your Y values. Your Y values actually stayed exactly the same. Four, one, zero, one, and four. So we can make some assumptions about what this next table, the Y3 table is gonna look like, right? So the Y3 table, when I do X, plus six, remember, that's gonna make it um, go to the left six spaces. So I'm gonna take each point on the parent function and I'm gonna go ahead and move each of those to the left six spaces. So now I'm gonna copy those new coordinates and those new coordinates are going to be put into my table. And what I notice is all my X values from the original parent graph, I subtract six from them. And so I got negative eight, negative seven, negative six, negative five, negative four, but my Y value stayed exactly the same. So that's what happens in a horizontal shift. A horizontal shift just moves it left, moves it right. Just the X values move. Let's talk about your K value. So now we've done the plus or minus. We know that that's a reflection across the X axis. We've done the H, so that's your horizontal shift, left or right. So we can kind of guess, you should be able to kind of guess what kind of shift this K value is gonna go ahead and give you at this point, right? So of course, what, we, what do we always start off with? We always start off with our parent function. Y equals X squared. Because you always want to compare the transformation to its parent. Like just like when people look at you and they're like, oh, you look like your mom or you look like your dad. The, the transformation should always look somewhat like the parent function, but something about it changed, right? So in the Y2, in your smart view, what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to do X squared plus 3. X squared plus 3. I'll try to give you a minute to do that. So once you put that in there, notice you're going to do your parent function, always going to be in the middle. And then when you when that pops up on your smart view or on your uh, TI calculator, what you're going to see is that it actually moved up three spaces. OK, it's not a coincidence. It's not going to move up six spaces. It's not going to move up 15 spaces. It's going to move up three spaces because the equation said X squared plus three. And then in the Y3 box, you're going to put X squared minus 2, and you should already be thinking, like, yo, what is this about to do? And you should know if it went up plus 3, it should go down negative 2, right? Boom. So what does the K value do? The K value, okay, moves it up and down. That is my vertical shift. That's the fancy words. The K value moves the graph up and down. That's my vertical shift, okay? So how do we graph a vertical shift? Let's talk about tables, right? So if you didn't have a calculator in your hand, you would try to use some tables. Again, parent function, always. Always start off with your parent function. Boop, 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 boop. All those five points, yes. So our first equation was X squared plus three. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move each point from the parent function up three spaces. So boop, one, two, three, four, five. Those moves up three spaces. 
So that's my new function. So those new points, I'm going to go ahead and copy them into the table. And what do I notice? All of my x values are the same. But what changed? In this case, the y values changed. The y values changed by plus 3. So I took all my y values from the original problem, from the original parent function, and I added 3 to them. So 4 plus 3 is 7. 1 plus 3 is 4. 0 plus 3 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So you can already guess, you should be able to make this next table without even looking at the graph, right? Because your next equation is x squared minus 2. And x squared minus 2 means that I'm pulling each point from the parent function down two spaces. So my x values are staying the same, but my y values are changing. Down two spaces. Swoop. So I should just subtract two from the parent function tables, not the, not the red table, that blue table over there, okay? And boom, look at you. You just learned about transformations. So now you should know that the negative makes a reflection. You should know that the uh, H value is your horizontal shift, left and right. And you should also know that your K value is your vertical shift, up and down. Let's try some on your own. So here's some scratch. You can try some on your own, okay? Sketch them. So sketch the parent function first and then sketch what the new function would be like. Try to make some tables. You should pause the video. TikToks in here, how embarrassing, but I'll play them. It all started when my mom met my dad, and they fell in love, and they had me. Hi, I'm Ryan, and my life is kind of crazy. It all started when my mom met my dad, and they fell in love, and they had me. Hi, I'm Ryan, and my life is kind of crazy. <laughs> so you can tell that I torture my students with TikToks. Um, anyway. <laughs> So the last thing that we haven't done yet is the A value. So we've done the plus or minus, we've done the H, we've done the K, but notice how I skipped over that blue A here in the beginning, okay? Us, uh, cause the A is kind of tricky. So um, of course, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to go ahead and you're gonna put X squared into your TI Smart View or into your TI Calculator. Um, and let's try in the Y2, two X squared. So notice what I'm adding in there is a two for my A value. Okay, so when I graph my parent function, looks normal. That's my standard, right? So compared to the parent function, what do you notice about the transformation? You notice that it's a little bit skinnier. Let's do um, 0.5x squared in your y3. In your y3, 0.5x squared. So what are we going to notice now? Oh, snap, it's a little bit fatter. So you can't use the words uh, skinny and fat because um, that's not okay. So <laughs> what we're actually going to use is we're going to use what's called a vertical stretch and a vertical shrink. <laughs> okay, so what I usually show my students, I usually show them a picture of a rubber band. This is a hair tie, same thing. And this is vertical. When I stretch it, it becomes taller and skinnier. We call that a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. But notice if I push it down, it becomes wider. I call that a vertical shrink, okay? A vertical shrink. So notice that the two value in the Y2 equation, two X squared, um, is making it go skinnier and taller. So I call that a vertical stretch. And the 0 0.5 is making it wider. I call that a vertical shrink. Ooh. So a vertical stretch, tall and skinny, or vertical shrink, fat and wide. Okay? Um, 
Let's see, how do you graph? Oh, great, graphing. Okay, so always start with your parent function and then multiply the y value by the a value. Parent function coming in clutch as usual. Do, 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 do. Swoop. Um, and then what you're gonna do after that is you're gonna multiply the y value by the a value. So the blue four in the parent function, I multiply that by two, so I got eight. And then the blue one in the parent function, multiply that by two, got two. Zero times two is still zero. One times two is two, and then four times two is eight. So look at that, I got a little bit skinnier. But look, my, my x value stayed the same, just my y values got messed with. Pay attention, okay? Um, so now let's do 0.5x squared. So again, multiplying the blue four from the parent function uh, times the 0 0.5 now. So 0 0.5 times four is two. One times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. Zero times 0 0.5 is zero. One times 0 0.5 is 0 0.5. And then four times 0 0.5 is two. 0 0.5 is the same thing as a half, yeah? Yeah? Okay. Um, so that's what my function looks like. Plot those points. Probably should have made them a different color, but it's fine. Okay. Last TikTok to torture you. It all started with my mom Look at those nails. and my dad. And they fell in love and they had me. Hi, I'm Ryan. Am I alive? It's, it's kind of crazy. crazy. <laughs>